Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 9. Today we're going to be talking about a new article that is in regards to the ending of the season where Grant Gustin reveals some alternate endings that could have happened at the end of The Flash series. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so we're still making Flash videos based on some of the articles that have been released post the Flash ending. They pretty much release them on the same night. So this specific article is about alternate endings and the way that the series finale ended. Like I said, this is from Entertainment Weekly, so you can check out the EW article in the description below. There will be a link. Go read it after this video if you want to read everything that I've gone over. But for now, let's go ahead and get into this. So, the article begins like this. The flash is over, but the ending is actually a new beginning for three more speedsters. The Arrowverse's last series finished its run after nine seasons in a full circle moment as Barry Allen's voiceover from the pilot returned, but with a twist. Barry was actually narrating while speaking to his newborn daughter, telling her the story of how he became the flash. And as he spoke to baby Nora while Iris watched on, he revealed that it was time to share his speed. He brought about an age of new heroes as Avery Ho, Max Mercury and Jess Chambers, all notable speedsters from the comics, were about to get struck by lightning. Grant Gustin goes on to say, I think that was really cool. I've also missed the voiceovers, honestly, and I liked doing those. So as soon as a voiceover kicked in in the last script, I got chills, and so obviously he went ahead and did that. That was a proper full circle moment, and this is me talking right here. I was definitely expecting them to do the voiceover at the end of the show, because that's how the show started, and it just completely made sense, so I'm glad that they actually went ahead and did that. But the article goes on by saying, Gustin reveals that he actually worked together with showrunner Eric Wallace to tweak that voiceover a little bit. He says, I wanted it to feel more like what I was saying in the pilot episode, I wanted it to be almost identical until we got to the part where we were talking about all the new species, and that was cool. The actor is quick to clarify that he doesn't like to change too many things from the script, however, when it came down to the writing of the show, I'm not a writer, I was protective of my character and understood what I thought was who he was, and at times that would feel truthful to me, but as far as the storyline went, I just let the writers go, and I trusted the writers for nine seasons. So there you have it, Grant Gustin actually tweaked the voiceover at the ending a little bit, because apparently what Eric Wallace and the writers have written was slightly different, and there was a voiceover narration, but it wasn't almost identical to the pilot episode, but Grant wanted it to be more like that, and so he pushed for that, which I'm very thankful for, and I'm sure most of you guys will be, because... I think the ending being similar to the way that he introduces the show is just the perfect full circle moment and it just makes so much sense and so obviously he's talking about you know the new speedsters rather than just talking about himself when he was introducing himself in the pilot but it makes sense that that kind of sets up the future. So that's why Gustin loves how the show ends in the series finale because that feels very flash he says. It's the universe, the multiverse, and the speed force. It's all so much bigger than Barry Allen. It felt very appropriate for the note for us to go out on. I completely agree. Like, yeah, it's about the multiverse, it's about the speed force, it's not just about Barry, and it's about, you know, setting up the future protectors of Central City and other cities. But Grant Gustin goes on to say that he had an alternate idea for how he wanted to end the show. It was a fan theory I saw online about Barry sacrificing himself to the Speed Force and becoming the lightning bolt that struck him in this full circle moment. I thought it was cool and I remember I talked to Eric about it and he was really set on Barry and Iris having a happy ending. He didn't want to see Barry have a hero's death the same way that Oliver did on Arrow. So that has been revealed previously by Grant but that is one of the alternate endings that he suggests. And that's because he saw the theory, he liked the theory, and obviously that theory is born out of the comics and the way that the Flash actually ended and the way that he died by becoming the lightning bolt that struck himself. And so Eric Wallace was pretty set on having a happy ending, like a good ending, and not sacrificing Barry like Oliver sacrificed himself at the end of Arrow. And I feel like that's just fitting for the Flash because the Flash is quite an optimistic show. It's not more pessimistic like Arrow. 
and I feel like that was the perfect end for Arrow, and in the case of Supergirl, I thought that was a great end, having Kara reveal herself to the world, and, you know, that ended on a good note too, so I don't see why Barry couldn't end the Flash on a really good note, and so, yeah, I just thought this was super fitting, and I'm actually very happy with how they ended the show in this series finale, so I think ultimately Eric Wallace made the right decision to go with this ending, but I like that Grant was able to tweak it to make it more like the pilot voiceover narration because that made it even better as an ending. And also the fact that they reference Stephen Amell's Green Arrow was really cool because that's how it started really. Because Grant cameoed on Arrow way back in the early seasons. But it turns out that Eric Wallace also had an alternate idea years ago for how he wanted to end the show that ultimately didn't come to fruition. I got the emotional heart of it but there was also no season 10. There was just no time to set it up, he tells EW. The ending that I did have in mind was that the negative speed force would be involved. We didn't get it quite as I wanted, but the negative forces storyline would have been far, far bigger. So obviously we've dealt with the negative forces before, and we've dealt with the other forces as well, many times in the last couple of seasons because Herrick Wallace has been big on that. And in terms of how the show actually ended, obviously the negative Speed Force avatar was chosen and that was Cobalt Blue. And so there was the negative forces that were involved, but I guess Eric Wallace wanted to create a bigger story if there was a season 10. And with that extra season, those extra episodes, he would definitely be able to kind of make the story bigger and I understand that having more episodes would have been better and I completely agree with him but at least we got some sort of negative speed force storyline and so Eric Wallace got kind of what he wanted but yeah it apparently would have been bigger but I thought it was cool the way they went around making Cobalt Blue the negative speed force avatar. Okay so the alternate ending just keep on coming because previous Flash showrunner Todd Helbing who ran the show during seasons 2 to 5 who now helms Superman Lois also tells EW that not one but two of his original series finale ideas didn't happen either. He says, I always thought that it was going to end with the newspaper. Flash vanishes in crisis, Todd Helbing says. Obviously, once crisis happened, they couldn't do that anymore. And I had a similar thought to Barry becoming the lightning that struck him where he gets caught in the future and the only way to protect him from a reverse flash is basically to create himself. I thought that would have been a cool ending. So I guess that kind of ties into what Grant was saying in terms of the theory that he had heard online and thought was a good idea. Past showrunner Todd Helbing also thought that was a good idea. I guess this just shows, you know, the kind of older sensibilities of The Flash and, you know, those people who worked on the show from earlier seasons. Like, I would have been really interested to see what the original showrunners would have done and you know obviously we've had different showrunners over the many seasons and they all would have ended the show in their different ways and it's nice to get an insight as to what Helbing a previous showrunner would have ended the show on if he was actually the one to do it and obviously he left earlier on back in season 5 then he started Superman Lois obviously he will get to end Superman Lois the way that he wants to end it so at least he gets to do that so it was obviously never going to be the newspaper as the way that they ended. They did have a nod and a tease to it with Iris actually finding that old article and also the lightning bolt theory obviously didn't come to fruition but despite all these alternate endings the current showrunner is proud of how the flash actually does finish. Eric Wallace says where we get Barry Allen to at the end of the series finale is incredibly satisfying for myself and Grant told me how satisfying it was for him putting a bookend and seeing where the emotional state of the character ends. He says, I hope fans can also feel the same sense of completion and closure as Barry Allen really achieves his full potential and also finally closes the door on his past demons. So I have to agree. I think they put a great end to Barry Allen's story and the overall story of The Flash. I have to say, I kind of disagree on him finally closing the door to his past demons because they were really easily defeated and we've talked about this and how in the series finale we felt like most of the villains were nerfed and they were easily taken down like the flash himself should have taken down at least reverse flash as well rather than allegra taking him down so although it feels complete in terms of barry i don't think it actually feels complete in terms of reverse flash specifically 
Yes, it may feel a bit more complete in terms of those other villains who don't regularly come back, like Savitar, Zoom, Godspeed and everything, but for Reverse Flash specifically, I don't think he had a good ending to the show. I think there should have been more with Reverse Flash and Barry, despite that one great scene we had in the finale where they were facing off briefly, but then Barry went off to fight Cobalt Blue specifically, and Reverse Flash went to Star Labs and he took out Chester, and he was defeated by Allegra in a really easy manner. And so, yeah, I think overall, you know, there was a good book end to Barry's story and the way that the character ends the show, and it's great the way that it sets up the future. You know, it gives us optimism as fans, seeing new speeds born out of Barry's powers and him actually realizing, okay, now I'm gonna be a dad, I'm gonna have lots of things that I'm gonna be preoccupied with, why not get some extra help? And if he can share his powers with someone else, that being three different people, that's gonna be even better. So I don't think he actually knew how to do this before. I feel like this was just a spare of the moment thing where he threw his lightning up into the sky. But at the same time, I really felt like that was also a homage to Barry becoming the lightning bolt, but instead of dying or anything like that, he sends it up into the air and it ends on an optimistic note by giving new speedsters powers by creating new future flashes. So that pretty much does it in regards to this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel. Also, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.